Welcome back to the Seat 14 Podcast. Joining us now, my former teammate at Kentucky, one of my best friends in the world, Marcus Lee. Marcus, man, thank you for getting up early over there in Turkey to get a chance to join us. I appreciate it a lot. What's up, man? It's bright and early. You know, I only do this for a few people and you have to be one of them. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. He's been, Mark, for, you know, uh, most of the listeners might not know our relationship. Marcus has seriously been one of my best friends since the day he stepped on campus. Um, we had a great relationship while um, he's been playing, but ha- has since grown it um, into his professional career. He's uh, he's always been there for me, one of the best guys on the planet. So appreciate you taking some time, getting up a couple hours early before workouts just to to join us for this little old podcast. Jordan, and I appreciate it. Um, so real quick, I just want to dive right into where we're at with this year's team. I know you haven't gotten a huge um, opportunity to watch them much um, as you're on a much different time, uh, time frame than us, a uh, different sleep schedule. Um, and we're only three games in. We've got a small sample size. So you've gotten to catch some highlights. Um, and we've gotten to talk a lot over the last couple of weeks about what we see from this team. Um, but I'm starting to hear a lot of comparisons between you and Damian Collins. Um, he is also a 6'9 power forward, stretch power forward, long, athletic, um, you know, bounces quick. I, my nickname for you, for pe- those that don't know, is Marco Pogo because of his Pogo stick like um, uh, uh, tendencies. Uh, and his ability to get off the ground very quickly. And they're saying, you know, you all share a lot of the same qualities. I was talking to our friend Evan Daniels about um, what he saw from from Collins in high school and compared to where you were at at that developmental stage of your career. Um, are you seeing any of those similarities? Do you, do you you know, you got any advice for the kid? How you how you got, you know, muscle on your frame and everything? What do you got? I, I see a lot of a lot of things he's battling with. I I, had, I went through that same battle in high school or not even high school in when we first got into college. Um, mm-hmm. Dealing with, I saw his his body frame. He's what six nine and two hundred and some yeah, chain. 200. That's that that's probably with with our body build. That's the hardest thing to deal with is mm-hmm. mentally getting over the the body aspect of how do how do I get into each day getting getting bigger? And mm-hmm. it seems like it's almost impossible to do. Yeah, but after that, it's it's figuring out how to, how to play with this body at at this level Mm -hmm. and out of how to make an impact and knowing that you're a smaller, big, how do you, how can you play with that? So I think that's going to be his biggest, his biggest obstacle this year uh, in his career is be like, okay, well, I'm small. Oh, well, how do I, how do I deal with that? How do I change Mm -hmm. that? How do I play faster instead of play, banging and- absolutely yeah so we you know we obviously had teammates um you know like dakari johnson or somebody that's more of a bruiser that's uh not necessarily going to play as much above the rim they're gonna you know they're gonna wear into your body and uh and you know wear you down over the course of 40 minutes um whereas you and damian are going to be guys that are going to be able to fly play above the rim run the wings um stretch the stretch the floor out a little bit And uh, defensively, it's a much different approach, too, because you got to think, you know, there's going to be times where he, as you were, are going to be asked to guard a bruiser, a guy that's going to, you know, try to wear into your legs and try to take you, you know, they need to wear you down so you can't keep jumping up 13 feet in the air and, and, you know, getting easy lob dunks and everything. So, um, you know, he's going to face specific challenges where coaches are going to throw that weight at him when he's out there. Um, And we need somebody to be able to back up, um, you know, Oscar. And I think Keon's done a good job at the four spot, spreading the floor a little bit. I think there's a couple other guys like Lance Ware that are going to have a good chance to do that. He's coming off of an injury, um, has has played limited minutes in the last two games, like I think one minute in the last two games total. Um, so that that spot's open. It's up for grabs. And um, one of the coolest things about watching your career and its in its developmental stages is you played a, a limited role in the early games of the of your freshman year, and then um, you know it had a significant progression somewhere through the middle, and then by the by the tournament time, um, you know, you're putting everybody on notice, like, hey, I'm here. Specifically the Mich- Michigan game. Yeah, I mean, it 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 it's a hard thing to deal with playing at Kentucky, especially when you're mm-hmm. not the number one guy. I mean, yeah. you you're mentally battling, man, why aren't I playing? You're you're playing against the guys that are playing every day, uh, playing in those games every day in practice. Mm-hmm. You're getting beat up, you're getting yelled at you're trying to find a way to figure things out in your head while still staying positive. Absolutely. And I think the biggest thing he's, he's really got to figure out is how to be mentally stronger, mentally ready 
Mm -hmm. and trying to figure out how to make impacts in each part of the game in whatever way it is and trying to stay focused in getting ready for those games. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you got to remember for, for, for those listening at home or um, that, you know, these guys are 17, 18 year old freshmen. The last, you know, before Marcus and Damian got here, their, their, their last game's a McDonald's all American game. They're the, they're the man. And then you come to a school like this where, um, you know, we make it a point to seek out all those top talent guys and put them in a practice gym together and say, go earn your time. And, um, you know, a lot of those, when they're going to be in the game is going to change. That lineup is going to change Cal's approach to who we're playing. Like there's going to be times where they're going to get 30 minutes maybe. And then there's going to be some where there's a game that they might not play as much in. So um, for instance, Damian, I think played uh, like one minute in the Duke game maybe, but then he came out in the last two and he's gotten a lot more run um, and he's looked fantastic and pick and roll in those rim runs. Um, you know, I really think he's got a lot of potential. I don't know where his ceiling is, but I think we know where his floor is. And, you know, that's a good starting point for this part, uh, this early part of the season. Um, my, my take on it is, you know, it's going to take him a little while. He's going to have inconsistent, inconsistent production um, because he's going through that developmental process. He's, he's a little bit extremely, I mean, uh, uh, physically immature. He's, he's able to get thrown around uh, by yeah. some of those guys, you know, getting, in, getting down in there on him. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun time to watch him because, like you remember, there were there were days in practice where Coach Cal's like, "Oh shit, Marcus, you're gonna have a crazy game this week because I would mm -hmm. be killing that week." And then there's mm -hmm. weeks where I'd be getting destroyed by Dakari over and over. I'd be destroyed by Cat over and over. And mm -hmm. KP was yelling at me cussing at me making me run over and over like I had drooling weeks and then I had great weeks absolutely and that's just what comes with being a younger kid that relies on your athletic ability to take over mm -hmm. and some days you some weeks you have it some weeks you know other people have it and you have to like you got to find a way to fight through and being this big you have to find that pit bull mentality uh, mm -hmm. and pull it out of you and we'll see if him we'll see we'll see if he he's able to pull that out of him and just grind through this mm -hmm. year yeah i how did what do you think it was that pushed you to that point where you realized that you know i'm gonna have to do this nobody's gonna be able to do it for me i gotta get in there and you know take my minutes and earn my earn my place on this team and and you know more so than just on the team but to be able to develop a career you knew you wanted to do this professionally so you had to find a way around that like you can't just settle so you started, I mean, I know they we had you on a crazy eating regimen. I know we had a, you on a crazy weightlifting regimen, but there was something mentally in you that changed along the way too. Um, I think the, I mentally always, I felt was tough. Mm -hmm. And that was the one thing that kept pushing me through is that I'm not, was never a quitter. I was never a person to just to lie down and let you do whatever you wanted to do uh, with me. And I was, mm -hmm. I knew I was going to eventually take over. And that first, when you first go on the teams, you have to, you kind of have to see what your role is. You have to see how your team is, how your, co how coaches things, how even how, how school's going. Mm -hmm. And after, after you get settled in, I was like, all right, cool. I know how things are going to go. How, I know how coaches are going to react. I know how my players play. Mm -hmm. Now I can play my game. I can, react the way I want to and and push and push myself harder and yeah it wasn't easy because I had to deal with potentially not practicing that week not lifting that week because I wasn't of weight I mean mm -hmm. we we all know rock where rock's oh, like yeah. all right Marcus you're underweight you're not lifting today and I'm, mm -hmm. and I'm shocked because like, lifting's literally the only thing that's going to help me this week yeah yeah it's and go ahead go for it I'm done oh I was just uh, you know it, you all you you I don't want to over compare you, but you're in a similar situation. Um, you know, they're going to treat him much like they treated you in your career path. Um, the one, you know, I think there's a lot of, a lot of things that don't show up on a stat sheet from what you all bring to the table. The biggest thing for me is the shot shot altering, excuse me. So you're going to get plenty of block shots, right? But your ability to alter shots with your length is more effective sometimes than getting a block shot. It, the, you know, they get a shot attempts. It's, not a good one and we get a rebound and we're off to the races and you brought that to the table i think and really changed the way that we were able to play because we as guards could force guys to drive like allow them to to get into the trees and then you all are just you know 
standing there waiting on them. And it was a fantastic relief for us to have that as, you know, the relief when you, when you get past us, um, that we were able to play entirely, a, a, a entirely different defensive strategy and allow them to kind of think they're winning and get into the paint and it causes an easy turnover. Um, so his ability to alter shots and also the way that you used to float along the baseline and just kind of let our guards get in there and cut, disrupt the, the defense a little bit. And when they would draw that defensive attention, that lob goes right there to the rim and you're there to clean it up and get an easy basket. Yeah, I think I honestly think that's some, one of the things that um, we're missing as I'm watching clips, watching games uh, with Kentucky is that we don't have somebody in there altering shots. We don't have like we, ha- we have a very big body person like we would mm-hmm. have to card. Curry is a big body person, but he couldn't alter shots mm-hmm. the way I, me and Willie could. Yeah. Um, and that's- that that's something that's really needed, especially with younger guys. Is mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you're going to get beat. Sometimes you're going to mess up. Yeah. And then you sometimes you just, you just need somebody behind you to be like, all right, I messed up, but we can make up for that. And sometimes it's not even a block. It's it's starting to become more of like a, a hockey assist defensively mm-hmm. where you don't need the block, but it's altering it. Them just seeing you come is 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 scary enough. You know, mm-hmm. seeing somebody like me or Willie Colley where anybody sees Willie Colley come over, you're mm-hmm. like, how do I, I it's it's going from I'm about to dunk this ball to yeah. Damn, let me put a floater up. Or I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be on Sports game. Center. I just don't know which end of this play I'm gonna be on. Right, it's gonna yeah. <laughs> happen amazing, or you're, or he's gonna have to dribble out and start this whole play over because it's not yeah. happening. And yeah, I think that's something he can really do, and it's gonna, it's gonna take some time. I mean, yeah. we're in November, and let's say what I mean, we didn't, we didn't figure it out. We were, people were t- checking us off in. December until we until we started winning some real games and mm-hmm. yeah I mean the way that the way that we Jordan and I um you know have discussed this plenty of times off air um about the Champions Classic and the way we start you know every, everybody just wants to kick off the college basketball season um with fireworks so I think the Champions Classic is fantastic <clears throat> excuse me but it's these next couple games over you know the last two games and the next five games where it's a home stretch where we just kind of grind in and focus, um, you know, you know, as well as I do going through Thanksgiving and Christmas, all that time off from school with the holidays and everything is spent with two a days in practice. So this is where we really, um, you know, amp it up, figure out what the problems are, how to solve them. And then when Camp Cal comes around after Christmas is when he really hones in and fixes all those scripting issues and things like that. And we usually end up having an entirely different team come um, the start of the SEC. The different yeah. that, that they have this year that we had in 2015 is they actually have what we would call veterans here. In this case, some of them actually are veterans. We got, uh, you know, transfers and uh, guys that have, you know, Kellen Grady scored 2,000 points at Davidson before coming here this year. Um, so a lot of these guys have spent a lot of time on the floor, a lot of time playing college basketball. Our point guard that's running the team played a couple of years in the SEC. Um, you know, they, they're experienced, they're vets. And, uh, you know, Oscar coming from West Virginia has been an unbelievable presence in the paint. But those guys together kind of um, – you know, putting their arms around the younger guys and showing them the way is something that we were had the advantage of doing. Um, and, you know, this team's starting to have it too. So um, we're really looking forward to what they're going to do. And I'm just, I'm glad to get your opinion, uh, you know, from a from the perspective of a big having been through it. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun to watch them this year.